Last week you saw us remove our stainless U-bolt chain plates. As part of our ongoing quest to keep as much metal rigging fixtures away from our boat, this week we execute an idea, suggested by Peter, our rigging advisor, for an alternative. We'll also be glassing in a new transom cap, removing a redundant seacock and installing raised mounts for our deck hardware. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Klansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. We are currently giving her a long overdue refit in Tasmania, with plans to set sail soon for the Australian summer. To support our project and remain notified of all upcoming releases, thanks for subscribing to our channel and hitting the bell button. G'day gang. Before we bring you more refit goodness this week, <laughs> we just want to let you know that... We have new t-shirts available for sale. Long sleeve, hoodies, short sleeve, and a few other bits and pieces. So head on over to the link and you'll be able to check them out. The launch of our new store includes our original range of clothing, hats and a tote bag, plus a brand new range designed especially for us by a couple of our printmaking friends. I've put a link to the store in the description of this video. We're running this campaign for only a few more days, so I'd recommend hitting pause on the video and grabbing something of your very own now so you don't miss out. So we're here on the next day. Those holes, you saw us drill them out. And then I got this HDPE tube. Okay, it's got a half inch hole through the middle. Stuck it up in there and I glued it with epoxy. Now, even epoxy doesn't stick that well to HDPE. But with my multi-tool and this little um, grout, <laughs> that grout bit that I use for, um, for getting rid of fiberglass, I was able to really rough up the outside area. And now we can see that the the epoxy does really, really stick well to it. It's a bit like when you're putting epoxy on epoxy, where you have to rough up and key up the surface. So it's stuck pretty well. So we've glued it in here, into that hole, and it's nicely bogged in the top. So the next stage is we'll pack this and make that flush with the deck, uh, flush with the boat. And then I'm going to actually lay up some strong double bias glass on the back here. And then, We'll move on to the next phase of our um, our new backstay chain plates. Something a little bit a bit different. Okay, excuse the noise. So if we have a look here, those um, those high density polyethylene tubes, they're really well stuck in. So what, what I'm going to do now, um, and you can see I've just ground back the area to uh, the old parent glass, fiberglass. So I'm going to put some double bias um, tape, some double bias fiberglass, quite thick, strong stuff, over the top straight over the top of those tubes and then I'll, I'll fare that back and, and access it. And what that'll give us will be a cap of fiberglass on either side, just to, just to doubly make sure that that stuff doesn't come out um, top or bottom. Um, it'll also beef up the area a bit, you know, like double, double bias glass top and bottom. It'll just strengthen everything just that touch more. And also I've just gone through and I found a few um, old holes in the deck. Now the, the tiller flat, the, the bit right up the back of the boat, it was quite hard to find all the leaks. It was a bit of a damp and nasty area. They, they all are on all boats. But um, in particular, these ones, there was a few leaks that were really hard to find. And so uh, I've opened up some of those old holes and we can see, um, you know, as I've, as I've been countersinking them to make a nice big area for the epoxy to grab, uh, we can find that we found that they've been patched up with Sikaflex, which is a polysulfide. Um, so it's good for, it's a bedding compound rather than a, a way of way of repairing your deck. So everyone repeat after me, Sikaflex is not a way that you patch holes in your deck in an ocean going yacht. Um, and particularly uh, those holes, they were just they were just the straight drill hole. So they, you know, there was just a straight cylinder down. There, there wasn't any chamfer, there wasn't any shape to it at all. So those plugs, some of them I just pushed on them, they just fell straight through because there, there was nothing to really give them any strength. And there wasn't enough surface area for the sealant that was used to actually to grab onto the parent material. So, yeah, we'll get rid of it. And uh, that's one less leak that we'll, um, we can't account for. 
With Troy and Pete satisfied with the strength of our new chain plates, it was ready for a fairing coat of epoxy thickened with Q-cells. Okay, so we've got a new um, transom cap. It's actually made out of West Australian Jarrah, which is great, you know, pretty solid hardwood. Um, there's a furniture maker and shipwright here, Jonathan Minibo, and he um, he's offered us like space in his workshop as well, which is incredibly generous of him. But he whipped this up for us really quickly. So we've got this hardwood transom cap, and I'm going to glass this in, and we'll probably just paint it black. Actually, we're not going to leave it natural timber um, because it was just some offcuts put around. So just really quickly, I've glued this in um, with thickened epoxy. Got a reasonably nice fillet here. Um, but we'll, we'll smooth all of this, make a nice transition into our, our holes for our Dyneema chain plates that are going to go for the backstays. We'll fare all of this and you'll hardly recognise it, but I am going to glass this into the boat as well. So I'm pretty happy to get rid of that old transom cap. And that's basically was just put there to support the arch which holds our wind generator and our solar panels. But this will be a, a much stronger addition. It was really weighing on, uh, <laughs> weighing on my mind when I was sailing around. If we have a look here, we can see that it's, you know, it's rough. It hasn't been fiberglassed yet. And none of this has been sanded ready for painting. Um, and I guess we'll have to get a, a new marule because I've started sanding it away. But all of this needs to be sanded prep for painting. And all of this will be glassed in. When laying out glass on a curved surface like this, we found it helps to cut darts into the fiberglass sheet, so you don't get any creases or pockets of air when you wet out with the epoxy resin. Well, we've had a bit of a frenzy of fiberglassing lately and it's um, we installed this new sturm cap. You can see like a bit of a white finish there and that's the, the fairing compound. So basically what we did, we, we glassed it and then a couple of hours later, once it had set up and gone tacky but it was still quite green, then we laid fairing compound on it. Um, and then we let that cure, washed it down with water, sanded it and then just applied a top coat of epoxy to it and then another one as well while that one was still green within about three hours. The, um, with these little pads here, they're Thermalite, um, which is a sort of closed cell foam reinforced with fiberglass. <laughs> it's strong stuff. So we made those pads and the same thing, I fiberglassed it, but I just let that go for about three hours and then um, then filled up the glass weave just with a, you know, with a brush stroke of epoxy. It's a really smooth finish. It's a really nice finish. So I'll key it up with about 240 so it's ready to take primer and then we'll paint it. So all of those things will disappear. They'll just become white paint, but they'll be six mil above deck level. So anything that's mounted on them, we're sort of going some way of getting past leaks. In the cockpit we decided to make some custom mounts for our traveller out of PVC foam, fibreglass and epoxy resin. Here we are using packing tape and a spray on mould release agent to make the mounts the exact shape with thickened epoxy. I mean, that, that still feels slippery. There's not anything stuck to that whatsoever. Yeah. And that is super smooth. So that's really great. We've got a seacock here, and we're not going to be using it anymore. Um, so I'm actually going to just patch the hole in the hull. We, we've decided that we want to make this um, this particular quarter berth our sea berth. Um, you know, we want an, an additional bed for when we're doing longer passages at sea, rather than going up forward where it's quite uncomfortable. Back here, you get less motion and whoever's in bed here can, can talk up to whoever's on watch and 
you know, you're more you're more aware of what your partner's doing. Um, you know, on night watches, that's quite a valuable thing. And also, like, if if the other person wants to use the boat, and you know, maybe you just want to read a book and just get out of the way, and that leaves the whole boat free for the other person. So it's a good thing. But we've got this seacock here, and it. It's it's done a, a bunch of roles in the past, none of them very well, and I think I might just get rid of it. <laughs> so, just get rid of one more hole in the boat. So it's not really a big deal. I just need to get the old bubba jarn onto it, rip it off, um, and leave a hole in the hull, and I'll just fiberglass it up. If we look at this seacock here, it's it's just been turned off but also plugged. But you could imagine that once we put a mattress here and a pillow, you don't really want that <laughs> in your bed. So it was the outflow for our water maker. Before I got the boat, this was the outflow for a, for a bilge pump. But um, the way it was structured, it was, it was able that when the boat rocked, a little bit of water was able to come in here and go down the hose and, and actually backflow into the bilge, which was quite dangerous. So I rectified that um, and we did use it for the water maker, but I've got another solution for that. So this is unused, so it's time to go. And so here's the thing, okay, so this is just fixed into the hull basically with its with the sealant. And yeah, you know, once you give it a bit of a bit of rock and roll, it sort of just gave up, you know, like it's not properly attached in there. So yeah, a potential source of failure that we're getting rid of here. Not very much sealant at all. Pretty poor affair, really. So just use that handy little cutter on a, a Dremel that I carry, among other things, yeah, I know. Um, so there was a bunch of stuff in there and we had to just get back to the parent, um, parent fiberglass that the boat's originally made from. So what I'm going to do now is grab a hole saw and I'll, I've got a bit of thermolite laying around still, so I'll, I'll go and um, cut a few holes and glue them in and then later on then we'll chamfer out the hole and lay some nice some sturdy fiberglass in there. Just a touch oversize, so we'll just uh, skinny that down with a bit of sandpaper. You can see the fiberglass embedded in there. This is this is this will be a good strong repair once we, we put these in. And a nice big patch of glass. So we'll let that set then we'll take to it with an angle grinder and then we'll put the fiberglass on and it is those you know those uh, those discs of, of um, fiberglass that are going to go on that's going to give it the real strength that that will be strong but we'll beef it right up and there we can see the benefit of using clear tape so I can come and see that all of the epoxy that I squeezed in here has made it all the way through and out so out through this hole and through the side So both these repairs, they're um, pretty much the same, like we've covered in other videos, I'm not going to bore you with it again. But, um, you know, different size pads coming out and then just finishing off with this peel ply. This isn't going to be the final finish and it will be fed in, but peel ply, once it's done you can just sort of peel it off and it takes, um, it takes the amines and things like that just with it and just leaves a surface just ready to put the fairing coat straight on there, it saves a lot of time. So satisfying job of all. Now. Oh yeah, it feels good. So are we cutting these loose bits off? Just sand them. I'll give sand. you a vacuum cleaner. Okay. I've got a sanding board.
So you'll see here we've got these pads and they're six millimeter thermalite. We actually repurpose the thermalite from the back of our solar panels. And everywhere that we're putting fittings in the deck, we're gonna do this. And this is gonna help prevent le leaks in our deck because we're not gonna have water pooling around all the fittings. So what Troy did yesterday, um, we're at the final stages with these ones. He put some um, thickened epoxy with Q-cells and then we sanded that off this morning and just so there's a nice smooth finish. Um, ready for the fittings to go in. They'll disappear. They will, hopefully. <laughs> I started trying to remove the vinyl sticker on our transom with a razor blade, but later found that using a heat gun and a scraper was much more effective. Here's where the seacock was removed and we put fairing compound on, sanded it, and then we had some extra thickened epoxy when we were doing stuff up on deck so we put some more on so you can see <laughs> there's lots of dribbles here so it needs another sand but we just wanted to show you what it looks like before we paint the, the top sides. Before it disappears. Before it totally disappears and it's like it was never there before. So you just saw Pete and Troy installing these, our new after chain plates. This chain plate, the back stays will come down off the mast and there'll be another frictionless ring and then they'll, it'll be lashed and tensioned using mechanical advantage. Pete came up with this idea and this replaces this. This is pretty heavy stainless U-bolt, old U-bolt. So that's right, what Pasky was saying, these will, these will substitute for this here so we've reduced a lot of weight but the other thing was is this is past its use by date and trying to replicate that angle what we were thinking about is actually getting this all fabricated uh, much like the chain plates up there but talking to Pete he came up with this solution where it's just like a $22 frictionless ring or fr low friction ring and you know about a meter of Dyneema <laughs> that's pretty cheap that's one of the things some people were asking us about the the cost of Dyneema they thought it might cost more than um, conventional rigging I guess you'd call it but the thing is is when you're when you're replacing your rigging when it comes time in a lot of instances you don't just replace the wire you have to replace the turnbuckles the the end termination stuff like that so by having these bits here we, we've saved like on every single bit of rigging perhaps like one to two hundred dollars so in this instance, because we didn't know what we were on about, we paid Pete. So we, we do have to pay for his rigging expertise by the hour. So that will be an increased cost. But as we've been involved in the process, we've learnt. So in the future, of course, it will be cheaper. <laughs> so it was an initial upfront cost because we didn't have the knowledge. And if you don't, then you know, knowledge is money. So we know that now, that this little piece here, I can't fabricate that at sea, but I can certainly, because this friction, this low friction ring won't be damaged, I can certainly just whip another one, one of these up if this becomes suspect at any point in time, because we'll be carrying a lot of four mil Dyneema, just because we can make soft shackles and lots of different things with it while we're out at sea. So there we go. That's um, thanks to Pete. He's cost us a bit of money, but he's also saved us some money, so it all balances out. At installation, we also learnt from Pete that our new Dyneema chain plates could withhold an incredible amount of force. You've got one, two, three. One, two, three. Three, you know, effectively, and on that sort of surface, you'd probably, I don't know, four or five tonne. If you had five tonnes, with, you know, pulling on the masthead, at any, the mast would explode. <laughs> are you talking about braking strain? You're not talking about rated lifting, are you? You're talking about braking strain? I'm yeah, it, it would, at one and a half tonnes, it would break. Okay. At some point, but it would only break if you had it tied like to a, a pin or a bolt or a shackle or something. When it's spread over this distance, and even more so over this distance, 
you know, I've taken one and a half ton four mil Dyneema to nearly four tons huh. before it's even broken, but that's on a very big bearing surface. And by the time this is laced to the other friction ring, the absorption lowers all the impact on the, the bearing point. Yep. So you're just absorbing it. So just while we're here and before we leave you um, this week, I, you might have noticed while I was talking about our new Dyneema chain plate, there's some mounts here. So we just made, with thickened epoxy, we just made some mounts to sit a stern arch on and we used the same technique as we did with the Traveller. So we did the packing tape and the mold release and then we just popped it. And now we've got perfect custom mounts for our stern arch. The wait is finally over and we have our old t-shirts and a whole new custom range of free range sailing apparel back on sale. You can grab yours now by clicking on the link on screen or in the description of the video. Thanks for watching and see you next week.